hello everyone welcome you all in my youtube channel this is the third video of the series az 500 exam coming to the questions you have azure active directory cleaner named contoso.com that contain user as shown in the following table we have user1 user2 and user3 and user1 is member of no group user 2 is a member of group 1 user 3 is a member of group 1 if we are talking about their mfs status for user 1 it is disabled for user 2 it is disabled and for user 3 it is imposed azure ad pim is enabled for the team in pim password administrator role has the following settings Maximum activation duration in hours will be due. Send email notifying admins of activation disable. Require incident or request ticket number during activation disable. Require Azure MFA for activation enable. Require approval to activate this rule enable. Selected approver group one you assign users the password administrator role as shown in the following table for user one it is active for user two is eligible for user three is else eligible for each of the following statement select yes if these statements are true otherwise select no and these are the statements when user one signs in user is assigned the password administrator role automatically second statement user 2 can request to activate password administrator role third statement if user 3 wants to activate password administrator role user can approve their own request then these are the solution first statement is false second statement is true user 2 can request to activate password administrator role and third statement is also false coming to the next question you have hybrid configuration of azure active directory that has single sign-on enable you have an azure sql database instance that is configured to support azure ad authentication database developer must connect to the database instance from the domain joint devices and authenticate by using their own premises active directory account you need to ensure that developer can connect to the instance by using microsoft sql server management school the solution must minimize authentication from question is which authentication method should you perform option a active directory password option b active directory universal with mfa support option c sql server authentication option d active directory integrated and correct option would be active directory integrated because azure active directory authentication is a mechanism of connecting to microsoft azure sql database by using identity in azure active directory use this method for connecting to sql database if you are logged into windows using your azure active directory credential from a federated domain coming to the next question you plan to use azure resource manager template to perform multiple deployment of identically configured Azure virtual machines. The password for administrator account of each deployment is stored as a secret in different Azure key. You need to identify a method to dynamically construct a resource ID that will designate the keyword containing appropriate secret during each deployment. The name of the keyword and the name of the secret will be provided as inline parameter. Question is, what should you use to construct 
एक्सेट्रा रिसोर्स साइड ऑप्शन ए की होल्ड एक्सेस पॉलिसी ऑप्शन बी लिंक टेम्पलेट ऑप्शन सी पैरामीटर्स फाइल ऑप्शन डी ऑटोमेशन अकाउंट करेक्ट ऑप्शन वुड बी पैरामीटर फाइल कमिंग टू दी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन यू क्रिएट अ न्यू अजोर सब्सक्रिप्शन दैट इज एसोसिएटेड टू अ न्यू अजोर एक्टिव डायरेक्टिव टी ने यू क्रिएट वन एक्टिव कंडीशनल एक्सेस पॉलिसी नेम पोर्टल पॉलिसी पोर्टल पॉलिसी इज यूज टू प्रोवाइड एक्सेस टू द माइक्रोसॉफ्ट अजोर मैनेजमेंट क्लाउड है the condition setting for portal policy are configured as shown in the conditions exhibit these are the portal policies conditions and the location the grant setting for the portal policy are configured as shown in the grant exhibit question is select which statement is true the statements are user from contoso named location must use mfa to access azure portal option b user from contoso named location must use mfa to access web services hosted in azure subscription option c user external to contoso named location must use mfa to access azure portal and these are the statements first statement is false second and third statement is true because second statement says user from contoso named location must use mfa to access web services hosted in azure subscription and third statement is also true user external to contoso named location must use mfa to access azure portal coming to the next question you have azure adt net that contain user as shown in the following table we have user 1 which is a member of group 1 and group 2 and its mfa status is disabled and we have user 2 which is a member of group 2 and its mfa status is also disabled the tenant contain named location as shown in the following table we have ctl and host these are the ip address ranges and these are their trusted locations you create conditional access policy for a cloud app named app1 as shown in the following table we have these four policies question is for each of the following statement select yes if the statement is true otherwise select no then the statements are user1 can access app1 from an ip address of 154.12.18.10 second statement is user2 can access app1 from an ip address of 193.77.10.50 and the third statement is user2 can access app1 from an ip address of 154.12.18.34 and these are the solutions first statement and third statement are wrong while the second statement user 2 can access app 1 from an ip address of 193.77.10.15 this statement is true coming to the next question you have azure subscription name sub1 that is associated to an azure ad tnet name contoso.com the tenant contain user as shown in the following table we have user 1 and their role is global administrator user 2 having the role security administrator user 3 having the role security reader and user 4 having the role license administrator each user is assigned an azure ad premium p2 license you plan to onboard and configure azure ad identity protection which user can onboard azure ad identity protection remediate user and configure policies users who can onboard azure ad identity protection 
user one only user one and user two only user one user two and user three only for all the users that is user one user two user three and user four only and second statement user who can remediate users and configure policies user one and user two only user one and user three only user one user two and user three only user one user two user three and user four and the correct answers would be for first statement user who can onboard as your ad identity protection will be user one only and for second statement user who can remediate user and configure policy would be user one and user two only coming to the next question you have azure active directory dna name that contain user as shown in the following table user 1 is a member of group 1 user 2 is a member of group 2 while user 3 is a member of group 1 and group 2 from azure ad pim you can configure the setting for the security administrator role as shown in the following example these are the settings from pim you assign security administrator role to the following group group 1 active assignment type permanently assigned group 2 eligible assignment type permanently eligible for each of the following statement select yes if the statement is true otherwise select no statements are user 1 can only activate security administrator role in pi pass second statement if user 2 activate security administrator role user will be assigned the role immediately third statement user 3 can activate security administrator role and these are the solutions all three statements are true coming to the next question your company has azure subscription name subscription 1 that contain user as shown in the following table user 1 as global administrator user 2 as billing administrator user 3 as owner and user 4 as account admin company is sold to a new owner the company needs to transfer ownership of subscription 1 which user can transfer ownership and which tool should the user use for user user 1 user 2 user 3 and user 4 and for tool azure account center azure cloud shell azure power shell or azure security center and correct options would be user would be user 2 and tool would be azure account center because for user 2 requires billing administrator select transfer billing ownership for the subscription that you want to transfer enter the email address of a user who is a billing administrator of the account that will be new owner for the subscription and second azure account center azure account center can be used coming to the next question you have azure subscription you configure the subscription to you a different azure active directory tna what are the two possible effect of the change option a role assignment at subscription level are lost option b virtual machines manage identities are lost option c virtual machine test snapshots are lost option d existing azure resources are deleted and correct options would be option a and option b role assignment at the subscription level are lost and option b virtual machine manage identities are lost coming to the next question you have azure subscription name sub1 you have azure storage account name sa1 in a resource group name rg user and application access the blob service and file service in sa1 by using several shared access signature and stored access policy you discovered that an authorized user access both the file service and the blob service 
you need to remove all access to SA1. And the solution provided for this is to generate new SAs. That the solution would be good. And correct option would be no. Because instead you should create a new stored access policy. To revoke a stored access policy, you can either delete it or rename it or by changing the sign identifier. Changing the sign identifier break the association between any existing signature and stored access policy. Deleting or renaming the stored access policy immediately affect all of the shared access signature associated with it. 